So in those first few years of a child's life, they will quickly learn various kinds of movements. You know, they'll learn how to reach out and grab for things. They'll learn how to sit upright and move their legs. And at about one year of age, that's when most kids will start to learn to walk. So these kinds of behaviors are what we call gross motor skills. You know, those, unco or those coordinated movements of the muscles and limbs. And as adults, we don't really think about these gross motor skills. We don't need to think about all the individual muscle movements that are required to perform our daily tasks. We just think about what we want to accomplish and then our body takes care of the rest like automatically. Uh, so just to give you an example, when I want to drive to the store to buy something, I just think about first of all getting in the car and my body shifts my posture, my uh, you know extends my legs helps me stand up and walk, like all that stuff I don't have to focus on. And when I get in the car, I'm not thinking about shifting my gears, I'm not thinking about turning the wheel. All I'm thinking about is what I want to buy when I get there, or what kind of podcast do I want to listen to on the way. But if, if you're a new driver, if you're learning those skills for the first time, just like a newborn learning to walk, you do have to focus on each individual step and it can be v pretty overwhelming. So I guess that's a, a good way to think about this is just like learning to drive a car, a newborn has to focus on every individual aspect of learning to walk. It's a pretty complicated and an incredibly difficult balancing act where one false move could result in catastrophe. A, a bad fall can do serious damage to any people of any age. <clears throat> but it's important to be able to get around the world. Uh, locomotion, you know, moving around in the world, is a huge focus of early life development. And newborns will find various ways to do this. By about five months, uh, many infants will get where they want to be by rolling. Like they'll just do barrel rolls on the floor to get where they want to go. At about seven months, that's when they can maybe start to do some kinds of crawling more effectively and they can also sit up a, a bit better like they have better spine control to kind of lift themselves off the floor a little bit better but it's around 12 months to 14 months approximately that most infants will start toddling so toddling is that early unsteady form of walking where they always seem like they're about to fall down. You know, they're kind of just like shifting their balance like this as they go, and it doesn't look very safe. So that's why we call them toddlers, because of that, you know, form of movement. Now, how an infant learns all these various behaviors, or how an adult learns to drive a car, uh, can be explained by something we call dynamic systems theory. So it's not like According to this theory, it's not just, you know, there's one skill and you gradually get better in it over time. Like walking is not a single skill. What's actually happening is all these different skills, like posture and uh, balance in various regards, like all these different skills are being learned simultaneously and integrated and then reintegrated over time to master this complex pattern of behavior that we call walking or toddling. So these different parts of walking are always being combined and recombined in various ways until the child is able to accomplish that ultimate goal. <clears throat> That's the basic idea of this dynamic systems theory. So I mentioned some parts of that are just being able to keep your balance and maintain your posture. You know, those are very important skills when it comes to locomotion. And it's virtually impossible for newborns to do. Uh, newborns just don't have the muscle strength and they don't have the experience and the, you know, the learning to be able to do this kind of stuff. If you try to have a newborn sit up straight like an adult would, they're just going to kind of slump over and eventually they're just going to fall because they just they can't do it. You know, their head is too massive. It's too heavy. And their spinal muscles just cannot maintain that posture. And when it comes to actually 
lifting yourself up and moving around the world, you are constantly balancing. You, you know, you, this is one of those things you never think about. It's those skills that you've mastered as an adult, but yeah, you're constantly balancing. The next time you go stand up and walk somewhere, just lean a little bit further than you would normally, left or right, and you'll see what I mean. Like, it's very easy to lose your balance if you actually think about it. So this takes a lot of skill and experience to learn. <clears throat> and as you're developing these individual skills, according to the dynamic systems theory, you're starting to put them together uh, in various ways. You know, you're coordinating your skills together uh, in a few processes. Like, uh, first of all, there's differentiation, where you're learning individual motions and they're keeping them separate. Like, you're, you're learning what each individual thing is for, distinguishing and mastering individual motions. And at the same time that you're doing that, you're also learning how to put things together. You're learning integration or linking of various motions into a coherent like pattern of behavior, coordinated whole. A second set of skills that takes longer to fully develop are the fine motor skills. These are skills associated with grasping, holding, and manipulating objects. You can basically think of fine motor skills as like finger skills, you know, how you interact with objects. And by about four months of age, most infants can clumsily reach for objects, but they have trouble manipulating them efficiently. By about five months of age, that's when they learn how to better coordinate the movement of their two hands. And just going a little bit into the child's future, by about two to three years of age, they've developed sufficient fine motor skills to use a zipper, but not a button. They're also pretty efficient at using touchscreen interfaces at this point. And by about six years of age, that's when they've developed sufficient enough fine motor skills to be able to tie their own shoelaces, for example. But you're never really done developing your fine motor skills. As long as you're interacting with things, and everybody does every day, obviously, you're never fully completed your fine motor skills. You're always refining them over your life. And that's how people learn new kinds of things, like how to play an instrument or how to play a particular kind of video game. You just have to know how to move your fingers. And typically, when it comes to these fine motor skills, people do tend to show a preference for one hand or the other. Uh, Right-handedness is the most common by far, but you see this in people of all age groups, except for newborns. Newborns generally don't show any preference for one hand or the other, that handedness doesn't start to manifest until the child's about one year of age. So yeah, it's about one year of age that you start to notice the infant reaching out predominantly with their right hand. That's for most kids. But if they're reaching out predominantly with their left hand, then that would be an indicator that they're left-handed. And there has been research done on, you know, what, it, what is the significance of being left-handed or right-handed? there doesn't really seem to be any meaningful difference there. I mean, we can kind of predict it to a certain degree. There does seem to be a genetic component to being left-handed, but there's absolutely no real consequence of one kind of handedness or the other. It's just arbitrary. 